Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Reverend Rich or Reverend Richard Pacheco. And as always, I welcome you here to Wisdom Wednesday as we continue our lesson series. And we did a meditation recently about going through things because our last talk happened to be about what we feel after we're doing the right thing. And most people are like, well, if you're doing the right thing, you feel great. There are some challenges that we go through, and we talked about that last Wednesday. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check that video out. Um, but today, I want to talk about something which was a lesson that had to be brought to me by my senior minister, Reverend Diane Sickler, to me because of something that I had learned a long time ago and still had not learned the lesson, so to say. And this takes place in every part of your life, no matter what spiritual practice you're into, what your spirituality is, if this part of your life is not right, you will never see the fruits of your labor. And that is being open to receive. So let me explain a little bit more for the story with Reverend Diane Sickler is that I love giving. And I love when I hear people say it all the time. I love giving. And I remember when I first came to Reverend Diane, we were talking about how I love volunteering and I had just pretty much joined the church and I had given some stuff, you know, some equipment I had from doing presentations so that they could use at the church. And then the gentleman who was doing the sound had left. So I volunteered to do that. And that grew and grew and I ended up doing more things. And there were some things that had paid to them. So, the, you know, they would normally have paid somebody to do it. But in my heart, I always said, no, just give it back to the church. It's fine. But it wasn't just the church, because that may sound admirable, but I did it in life. You know, I am a Reiki teacher now, and I still have problems charging people for um, treatments or things like that. I am a certified life coach. And, you know, one of the po one of the lessons is to make your price point of what your prices are for group coaching as well as... Um, excuse me, an individual private coaching. You know, I am a minister now, so I'll be performing weddings and I'll be performing, you know, celebrations of life and speaking. And yet in my heart, it's hard for me to put a number there. And that people like to say that it is, you know, the value that I have. And maybe it is. I don't know. Like I always say, I like to be wrong because I get to learn. And if I get to learn, I get to grow. And if I get to grow, I get to share. And if I get to share... I get to help other people learn. But whatever the case is, my journey had to start in one place and that was being open to receive. And I remember, excuse me, Reverend Diane Sickler had given me a book by Catherine Ponder called Open to Receive. And it made me realize a lot of things that I already knew and I wasn't putting into practice. So if you're in, if you're a Christian or, you know, you read, study the Christian text, we know that Jesus said that the kingdom of God is on hand and whatever we ask of the father, he's more than grateful to give to us. Now that can take metaphysical meaning that can take literal meaning, whatever it is. Remember, we are open and this is a safe space for everybody to practice. But if it's already there, why is it not coming the way we want to? And one of the things is being open to receive. And what I mean by that is if I'm constantly giving and the law of giving and receiving says it go, what goes out can come back tenfold, but I never open the door to allow it through. Then what? And it's not always a door and that door can take many, many things. So years ago, I met a guy during a, a business conference and he did, um, he did a personal development or a self-development uh, talk, and he was talking about how addiction can stop you from doing things. And I mean, this guy, you know, when he laid his life out, he was pretty much addicted to everything, you know. And afterwards, we talked, and I told him, I said, I love to give and I love to whatever, but it just doesn't seem that it's good. And then he made me realize back then that the problem is that we were giving with a, as a negotiation more than just giving from the heart openly. What do I mean by that? It's, well, in my case, you know, being very insecure in myself, I said, I like to give. And he says, why do you like to give? I said, because it feels good. He goes, great. And it feels good. Why? And I was like, well, what do you mean? 
he goes, well, why does it feel good? And I go, um, because it does. And he goes, well, let's deep, dig a little deeper. He says, so you like to give because it feels good. And I said, yes. He says, and you say you don't know why it feels good, but don't you think that it feels good because they like you? And I'm like, well, I would expect that. Yeah, I mean, if, so he says, okay, so you give really not to feel good, but for people to like you. And I go, oh, I never thought of it that way, but he, I go, okay. He goes, okay, let's go deeper. I'm like, how much deeper are we going? He goes, well, we now know that you like to give so that people will like you, but why do you need people to like you? And I'm like, I don't understand. He goes, well, let's go back. You like you like to give because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good because you think people like you. And because people like you, you feel good. But is the truth is that you feel good because you need to represent it because you don't like yourself. And trust me, when he said that, my heart dropped. And it was like somebody opened an epiphany to me. And I realized that I had to work on myself at that point. And that's what being open to receive is, is that it's not always about open to love, open to, you know, uh, material things coming in. It's about being open to all things, whether they feel good or not. Because sometimes we have to be open to that lesson. See, when we talk about prosperity and unity, Charles Fillmore tells us that Prosperity doesn't come in the way of, you know, an ATM in the sky coming down, but in the way of ideas and dreams that we must act upon. Unity's principles tells us from point of the source to us being great, to our thoughts being things, to through the actions of prayer and meditation, we receive this abundance. We receive this and then we must take action on it. And I used to joke about this with people with prayer. You know, I used to say, if you ever watch somebody doing a traditional prayer, it's almost like making a phone call for something and leaving a voicemail and hoping for the best. And what I mean by that is, and you've heard this prayer all the, from different people. Hello, God. Yeah, I'm having some problems with this. I really need to find this money somehow. I need somebody to be healthy. I need to be healthy myself, blah, blah, blah. And I promise you that if you do this for me, I'll give you this, blah, blah, blah. All right, bye. Click. And that's what the prayer sounds like. But I've always been taught that when prayer is talking to God, intuition is God talking back. But if we shut ourselves off, are we truly listening to what's ours to hear? And what's important about this is that over the last weeks, we talked about a four-part series of being a badass and what we needed to do to take that into action. And even through that, we realized that we had to be grateful. We had to understand the feelings we're having and what we need to do. But we also needed to understand that we had to be open to it. You know, we have signs happening all over the place. You know, for me recently as well, you know, I've had some concerns and some things that I'm dealing with some challenges and I try and I remain in faith. I say my prayers, I do my meditation, I try to remain open. And that's the important word here, open. And I remember one day sitting down and I was thinking about the situation I'm in, how it was making me feel. And I was wondering if this was spirit, God, intuition telling me that I need to change. And literally, as I sat there, an opportunity came. Now, the question here is, and this is where free will comes in, was the choice of do I act upon it or do I just let it go as coincidence? I acted upon it. That opportunity became a second opportunity. And we know in the prayers that we say this or something better. So I am open to receive and allow this opportunity to unfold to where it's meant to unfold. And it's the same thing in your life. Let me ask you, is there something that came to you mentally or whatever that you're holding on to? Think about it. If I use a better metaphor for this is. If you drive, you know that when a car doesn't have its oil change, it drags. So you have an oil change, now you feel free. So would you not think your life is exactly the same way? 
when that oil light comes on and says, hey, it's time for a change, and that oil lights your heart or your head, and it's time for a change, and you know in your heart that it's right, and you change it, you feel lighter. But the problem is, do you act and change the oil, or do you wait to see what happens? And in some cases, and I'm guilty of this, I've been the person to attach an anchor to the back of my car, and I'm driving and dragging my past with me. Or even worse, have you ever tried driving while looking in the rearview mirror? Now, it may sound funny, but many people do that in life. And in reality, I did it driving one time because I was watching the rearview mirror because there was a car driving erratically behind me. And my point was, okay, I'm watching this car to make sure that, you know, it doesn't hit me or God forbid somebody else. But the problem was I was so focused on him. I didn't see what was happening in front of me. And I almost hit a car in front of me. Luckily, I was able to stop. Life works the same way. Are you looking in the rearview mirror? Are you looking at your past friends, your relationships, your, you know, possibly situations, jobs, things that happened in the past and you're still holding on to it and it's slowing you down? Things that may have been taught to you that you're holding on to and those are the anchors that are keeping you down. What would happen if you were open to receive and took action on it? What would happen if you let things go, no matter how scared you are, no matter how you go through chemicalization, you let it go? What miracles are waiting for you on the other side? You know, we look at our master teacher. How many times has he, could he have said, yep, yeah, I understand, I got things to do. But he stopped, gave thanks for something that hasn't even happened yet, and went ahead and took action. We know the story of him praying in the garden. Father, may this cup pass me. And his last words were in the prayer, not my will, but thy will be done. What if we use those words in our own prayer time, in our own meditation time, Let's take the religiosity out of the words. But I'm talking to my intuition. I'm talking to spirit. I'm talking to universe. I'm talking to whoever. And just reminding myself, not my ego self that's trying to protect my comfort, but my intuition, thy will be done. What can you accomplish today? What could happen if you were open to receive? Now to kind of jump back to the story of Reverend Diane, my issue was receiving money or payment for things. But I realized that when I became open, and then again, we're not talking about just money. When I became open to receiving, now it's not always going to come as you want. It's just going to come as you need it. Or as they say, you can attract, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. But when I became open, things started coming in, opportunities, um, some rewards, some things that came in in non-material fashion, ideas, creativity, things that continue to grow and attract people. You know, I was worried about, okay, I'm a, I'm a minister on YouTube doing this and I'm not putting on rock shows with music and stuff. It's just me talking. And yes, I do see this, this and many, all my other shows becoming a little bit bigger in adding more things to give you the experience. But right now, I was I figured, let me give you the lessons and let you make the choice whether you want to take action on it. And yet, I've been asked to speak, I've been asked to appear, I've been asked to assist. So these opportunities continue to open up, and the choice is mine whether I take action or not. And in that action, I realize that I'm opening up more doors and more opportunities are happening. And again, it doesn't always arrive as I want it, but it arrives as I need it. So once again, I ask you, what is it that you're doing right now that's either holding you back and keeping your car running as slowly as possible so that you don't challenge yourself or what is going on in your life that you're willing to say, you know what, Rev. Rich, you're right. I need to be open to these ideas that have come to me. I need to be open 
to the feelings that I have. I need to be open to let go of the things that have been holding me back and see my life go full forward. During the Badass series, we talked about, we talked about tapping into the good. We talked about releasing the handbrake. We talked about getting over yourself and finally kicking it off. They're all important today. But to do that, you must be open to receive the message, to receive the instruction, to receive the intuition, and know in faith that you are never alone. Because it is through this faith, through your strength, through your wisdom, that you know you're headed in the right direction no matter what. We're all scared. We're all fearful of what may be. But when we release that anxiety, we know there's great things waiting for us. I hope you got something from today's talk. Um, I am going to be starting a series soon. As we get into the holidays, I'll be probably doing a series on some of the metaphysics of Christmas and things like that. So stay tuned for those things. As always, check out Meditation Monday. And now we have Truth Talk Tuesdays with my daughter. So check that out. That's our, our first episode on the YouTube. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe. Hit the little bell on the page so that you'll always be um, notified of our sets. Again, this is our spiritual um, channel, but as well as our Reiki channel and other things coming up. So stay tuned for that as well. And if no one else has told you, I love you, there's nothing you can do about it. And I bid you namaste as that big and beautiful divinity in me loves and sees that big, beautiful divinity in you. And we will see each other on Monday.